Those were quick claps. Hey, uh, <laughs> somebody's in a rush on Friday. He's young. He does everything fast. <laughs> All right. Uh, February 4th, Friday. We're in the wood gym once again. Dr. James Chu's in the house, and we have what I call Jiu-Jitsu Jesus. I hope that's not disrespect. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, Sam, Big Sam, Jiu-Jitsu Man is in. Uh, we have our two producers, Burt Reynolds Lookalike and Grift Along. So we are ready to go on a Friday morning. God, I'm right on time again. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, so we're opening up with mental toughness. So I was looking. This was one that I was uh, relaxed to come to. You know, it wasn't yeah. hyped up and Griff sees me getting all agitated and listen to Meek Mill coming in, getting all, you know, traffic. I was really <laughs> flow because his Sam spirit is um, nice. It's a it's a it's a flow state. And my, it's like water. You know, I don't want to be Bruce Lee over here on a Friday morning. Yeah, that's <laughs> one know, of my favorite say. quotes, by the way. Like, yeah. Be like water. Yeah. Yeah. He just he's just a smooth cat. So. Mm-hmm. So, Chewy, take this, introduce, you know, let's go back because we have to, you know, a lot of people haven't listened to this show. Quick intro to the man over here, Samuel Braga. Sam, how many, you're not going to brag about it, but I'll brag for you through questions. How many world championships? Well, counting, Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. So, counting the Gi no Gi Masters, it would be 13. 13. <laughs> 13 world championships. What is Gi? What does that mean? Gi is a uniform that we wear during the practice mm-hmm. and you know daily basis. Now more no gi, which is like without the uniform. Yeah, so that they kind of look like they're in spandex. They look like little superheroes. Yeah, wrestling. that's the yeah. cool thing. You look like a superhero. Yeah, you feel yeah. like a superhero after doing. Yeah. It. So there's two it, two it categories. Is, two categories. One where you got a uniform jacket. You know. Pajamas. Where did the gi come from? Um, I think that came from Japanese judo. Yes. Yeah. So there's um the way jujitsu started was there. Japanese judo guy that came to Brazil taught the family, the Gracie family. This was a long time ago, darn near a hundred years ago. Um, maybe not that long. It's a long time ago. And then, um, they all dressed in the traditional Japanese kimono slash gi. That's how they trained. And then, um, the Gracie's just kind of took that and continue to wear it. Got it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because that's essentially what, the, what happened was that like um, some of the Carlos Grace, which is a family, I didn't know this because a friend of mine also was reading the, the biography. I knew parts of it. So the Grace family, um, essentially, they're like the, their father was a diplomat, oh. right? Hmm. So they came from from well well known background in politics and everything in Brazil. Hmm. And um, what happened is so. A couple of the sons, like, you know how it is. Sometimes they didn't have, they have so much energy as a kid that they have to channel that, that energy somewhere. And he's like, so being a diplomat, he, he met this Japanese guy and he said, Hey, I want you to teach martial arts to my kids. Give them discipline, give them reaction. So from there, they took that, you know, and, and he just, you know how that everything evolved, right? So it evolved to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mm. what they got from like this, um, Maeda. Japanese, yes, judo master, judo master, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's how it all started, yeah. But then they started doing uh competitions without the gi, so the techniques are similar but different. So you don't have things to grab on when you don't have a gi, it looks more like MMA, right? Because there's no jacket now in modern MMA, but that's essentially yeah. what the, 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 the goal that they, once they develop that the style of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they start doing challenge, they want to prove that. Their style were more like efficient than any other martial arts. It was more like a stylistic fight between martial arts. So they want to prove theirs were more effective. So so they had a lot of challenges and sometimes they wore the gi depending who was fighting. Carlo Carlson Grace Carson did more like a no gi and Hickson did more like a no gi. I think I remember Helio Grace when he had his challenge. I think he was wearing the gis. Um, Helio was more like. Um, feisty than than carlos you know um but uh, that's essentially where the mma came from because they want to proof which is the one of the most effective fighting style it was like 60 70 years of them doing this in Brazil oh yeah before they, they came even to the america right oh yeah they fought like not yeah they fought the way up to like put jiu-jitsu in the top one rank as far as fighting style so they showed they put like in the newspaper challenge about like okay, we would challenge anybody, 
and they put money prize because otherwise nobody's gonna fight anybody. You know, so they put like at the time it would be like ten thousand dollars for whoever can can beat them. They put it on national TV too. Right? Yeah, yeah. they they'll they challenge everybody. Mm. Yeah. So the Gracies are kind of mentally tough. <laughs> <They're>, I mean, <laughs> I met I met some of them. They goes beyond being mentally tough. They get to a, like a craziness type of <laughs> mental state. There, they're like um, majority. I mean, I met Hoist Grace and I met like several of Grace family. And one thing that highlighted me the most about the traits would be their confidence level. You know. Confidence. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. They super confident. They're super confident. I mean, I remember like it was twelve years ago, thirteen years ago. I had like a, I mean, with Hoist Grace, right? So I met Hoist Grace. You, you mean we hang out and everything. And I, one thing that struck me first was like, okay, <coughs> this guy's super confident. Uh, hmm. He's super confident. Like, in you fight anybody anytime, anytime, I'm anywhere. anytime, anytime. If you make a joke, I remember that. I mean. We're Brazilian, so we would joke around and play around. And I, I remember this vividly that I made a joke. It was not like he didn't took it lightly. <laughs> no, no, he just sm- give like a smile, like that was not funny. <laughs> just still with glare. yeah, and I was like, man, I mean, it just I didn't mean anything. <laughs> just trying to to break the ice here. <laughs> he quite quite understood, but like, uh, but I can tell like he's he's you can the way he walks, the way he you know, and everything in him is like you can. You can sense the confidence level there. That's awesome. Um, and then, uh, so I guess confidence is that a component of mental toughness. And if you want to bring it down to, um, back to. Yeah, I think ability. like that's built over time though. Okay. I mean, because you feel like, I remember starting jujitsu. I mean, I, was I like not- that. I like that built over time because when we had the two Marines in, both you guys were here for that, right? <clears throat> When the one said, and, and you work with both both yes. the guys, when the one when you asked the definition of mental toughness to both of them, the the one said commitment. Commitment, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. Zach, Zach. Said, but yeah. I think I like where he was going with confidence. And J.P. Aaron Sebia, one of the baseball players we had on, a professional guy, um, he was always told get more confidence at the plate. So I had to define that you just can't get commitment or you just can't get confidence i like how he said it it it's 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 going to be more than that of getting your confidence you just can't go be more confident at the plate how do you yeah. get that is yeah. get get more confident at grappling right right from there right yeah. how do you get that yeah. and yeah. and uh and and biblically griff it talks about the more you serve others the more you do unselfish acts it you become confident and and that's just what I pulled from the Bible. But that's what I wanted to get to is how do you get that confidence? And when he said commitment, to me, that's just a word. That's like, I'm going to be motivated today. How do you, mm. I'm going to be disciplined today. Yeah. How do you get those? Yeah. So think about that or, or spit it off. And And then when you look at Sam, I wanted to go through this as, I want you to start defining the guys you're bringing in. And I think we start with Sam is why do you think he's mentally tough? And, you know, you can Mm. think about that through the show and then come up with like what you see that you think people are mentally tough. Yeah. Your, your guys that you think are mentally tough. Yeah. Well, where do you think that confidence come from? So tell us how you, you develop that maybe in yourself or where you've seen it. Well, the confidence comes from your performance, you know, over time. Right. I mean, you build that. We cannot just come in. Sometimes the, because even if you come in real confident, like I've seen it before on the mats. Okay, so you've seen guys super confident coming in. It's like, man, I'm the big shot. And that you go check is the the is really hard. Hits them. Are really you hard. talking about like the first day on the first mat. day on the mat? Because that's first a, that's day. a pheno- real phenomenon. Jiu gen- j- j- Jitsu. Everybody goes through that. Everybody walks on the mat for the first time, and then they're like, "Oh my god, what just happened to me?" What just happened? Okay, yeah. because I mean, it's a whole different set of skills you're gonna develop. You know, you're gonna. I mean, I joke with this a lot about uh, how you started Jiu Jitsu the journey. You have to reprogram yourself. So everything you think you know, as far as biomechanics and everything, leverage is gonna be. Sh- huge change because i remember that okay 
first thing you're doing, like just an example, for example, when you're playing guard, just be short, both shoulders blades on the mat sometimes, or it depends what guard you're playing. But let's pretend that you're only the most uncomfortable position, which is like both shoulder blades pin on the mat, and you have to have your guard. So the the most common thing for the person when he does that the first time, he put both feet on the mat. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Because we are programmed. Yeah. From the sense the time you start walking to walk. Walk. Yeah. yeah you're and right. your feet are designed to be on the floor. Right. To give you balance, to give you strength. Right. So not necessarily comes, they is translate to jujitsu. <laughs> so your whole concept and you have to reprogram your body to act in a totally different way. So that itself there is going to shake your whole uh, structure. Your reality. Your reality. Your reality. All of a sudden you're like, you you bit maybe you spent all 17 years of your life you go into the jiu mat and you're like what you've been doing all your life walking on your feet standing put your soles on yes. your feet on your ground is the wrong thing to do in jiu is going to be the wrong thing to yeah. do if you're on your back yeah um so that you're going to be like whoa this is so different so it's well, just that itself right mm -hmm. so then you have to reprogram yourself and then you understand like you're gonna see guys that I've seen a guy that from my high school that he he heard that I was training jiu jitsu and he's like I want to train that too. I was like if you're doing I can do it. He straight up told me that because he's super way more athletic than I am and he was like bigger and stronger and puts his you know attributes. He's like man I'm gonna be good at this. He could be good, but when in the first contact on the mats when you realize okay I'm not as strong and every, everything I have perceived to think that I was is not yeah. so true on a mat. Yeah. Because you have to restart. It's like re reprogram yourself. That's why I say that. Because you change a lot of your instincts going to change. Some things, so if you feel a wrestle before or anything like that, it's gonna, your instincts going to going to kick in some of the aspects of jiu-jitsu. I'm not saying everything, but being your back in the both shoulder blades pin is going to be different than anything yeah. is the hardest part. So that you're gonna, so you have to rebuild yourself, right? And I believe in anything that I do as well. For if I go here and walk out with Charlie, you know, I mean, it's gonna be a whole different world because the way the level he's at, right? Mm, yeah. The level I perceive to think that I'm at, right? Yeah. It's all about perception, because I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna work out with Charlie. In my mind, no being martial arts, I say, okay, this is gonna be tough. I'm gonna have to suck it up and fight through it. You know, I had that experience before on a workout room, right? This guy wanted to really break me because his mind's like, I want to see how far he can go. That was his, his idea. And literally, I was about to pass out. And I was like, I'm not going to quit because this is what the guy wants. So I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting no matter what. And I had like at the time I have a sinus infection, so I could barely breathe. So I was like, he's like, do you want to stop? I was like, no. Are we done? I asked him if we were done. He's like, no, we're not done. It's okay. We'll keep it going. This is going to sound nasty. Sorry, guys, about this. But I had so much mucus, you know, running nose. It was terrible. It was a terrible um, experience. It was fun. I liked it because I fought through it. But I told him, I'm not going to quit. So I got my shirt. I took off my shirt, and I blew my nose <laughs> on my shirt. It was mucus everywhere. This guy looked at me like, oh, my God, this is nasty. It's like, I'm ready. So I knew what I got myself into. You know, a lot of people, when they start something new, if they don't start, like, for example, if I work with Charlie, I know that if I start working with him, my first month, two, three months, whatever, is going to be hell. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be fun because I'm going to be testing myself, right? Yeah. So how many people are willing to do that? So that, and then over time, what I'm saying is, and in the beginning of this whole journey with him, it's going to be tough. I'm not going to be as confident. As I'm going to be a year later, it's like, okay, now I feel good. I know what I'm get, getting. I improve my techniques, right? Because it's all about technique. You know, if I'm going to work out with him, I'm going to struggle because I don't know the techniques properly. He's going to help me out. But your body does not understand yet, right? Okay. we're, we're <clears throat> He's probably my favorite with the mental toughness because we're, we're trying to – do you understand what he's – when you go, I'm not going to quit. I want to know where that comes from. Now, now we went over repetition practice. I think that builds confidence. So now we're yeah. talking about how do you get confidence? Well, yeah. repetition, repetition, practice. That's what I'm listening to with, with one of the world's best out there. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, it's fortunate enough and, and it's awesome that we have minds like Sam to bring into this wood gym of, of knocking. You already know he's, but see, but you can look at his eyes. Okay. Mm-hmm. He already has that in his eye that he's not going to, so he'd be a perfect guy in here to run through stuff. And, and oh, yeah. he's going to do that guy. Yeah. <clears throat> How, where, why? Yeah. Why, why, where does that come from, Sam? This like desire to put, because, uh, a lot of people, you, you put them through that. The uncomfortable and yeah. the hard, and they stop. And that was scripture two days ago. It's like, if it's not uncomfortable and hard, then why do it? And and in, in the book of Samuel, Revelation, I, I'm sorry to go on that, or maybe I'm not sorry, but, you know, I listen to a lot of that because I draw strength from that, is David and Goliath is, he talked about, God talks about running to your problem, mm-hmm. like run to the storm. Confront the problem. Confront, and that's a guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, this is a guy that you. He Sam's the type of guy that you kick in the door, and you're like, "We got to go kick some guys' booties." And he's like, "What car would take it?" You know, <laughs> yeah. like he's that guy. He's not going to question anything. Where does that come from? Yeah, where does that come from, Sam? Well, I mean, I think the most important thing is from the time you develop yourself as a child, right? I mean, it comes a lot from that, I think. Because my dad, I remember my dad does this vividly in my memory. And my dad would come home and we joke around, play around. And he's like, are you tough? I was <laughs> like, I'm tough. And you come and he just, not like in a good, in a bad way, but you come and rough me up a little bit. So yeah. Like, Don't quit. Be a man. And the same thing I do to my daughter um, a little bit about that, you know. Sometimes I wrestle with her. It's like, don't quit. And the first thing, it was co- the coolest thing ever, like this experience that I want to share with you guys here, and I'll share it with a lot of people. But so, my daughter, first time she was on a mat, on a mat, and for anybody, is a scary situation because you you get claustrophobic. There's a lot of factors there, kind of scary a little bit, super un- uncomfortable, unnerving. Yeah. 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 So she got in a position where this kid was just literally like bullying her pushing her and i look at her in and, and she never been on a mats before and i was like don't quit do not quit go there and fight mm-hmm. fight harder and then she came back to me she looked at me crying like don't quit so by the time she was five now she gets mad and i and sometimes it goes back and forth with her like I don't know want to do this. I'm like, no, go back and do it. Mm-hmm. There's no other way. So I believe now is about where you come from, right? I mean, so my dad taught me that. Like, mm-hmm. so, they, so it can be taught. I was just about to say, yes. can it be taught? So mm-hmm. is, is it a thing that, you know, some of the greats that we're still going to have on is, and I think you'll appreciate this. Um, one of my clients, former athlete, thinks that mental toughness is also a talent and that it could be nurtured. Like you could work on it where we, we take, um, Oh, he's got a lot of heart or, or we don't look at that as a, as a talent. We look at speed, strength, jump, and and he thinks you could develop it. There, so there, there's some people that have an inbred heart. Yeah. Like, right. And you could nurture it. And, yeah. and, and, and I, I still go back to uh, childhood. I think everybody in this room has had some some type of childhood trauma that turns into that grit factor, in, in my opinion. I mean, we could all go through, I, me personally. I mean, yeah. again, nobody has a perfect life. And if they do, no. they're, they're, no. they're telling you yeah. lies. So yeah. you have to pull some of that. Mm-hmm. I know I pulled my childhood trauma to be where, where I am today. Yeah. All from... I So... Yeah, man, I think I've circled back around to more of a product of your environment because he was just talking about when my daughter was five, don't quit, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And then I had lunch with Ashlyn yesterday. Your daughter. My oldest. Mm -hmm. And she was like, gosh, dad, you were such a ass in in middle school, high school. And and I was like, well, explain some things. So she explained some things and and they were kind of hard, but... I was like, well, would you take him back? You mm-hmm. know? And then she's like, no, you know? So it's, it's, you know, there's some things that you just have to do. 
Yeah. And, and I think you, as a, as a parent, which at those age, I really embrace it of just, I, cause I have two girls and I stayed hard on them. Oh yeah. You for know, sure. Cause you want them not to rely on a man. You want them not to give into that. You want to it, it, I stay. I have my girls state opinions. You know, if you don't, if, 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 if you don't agree with it, if you have a question, question it, speak up mm-hmm. all the things that <clears throat> we're taught not to do. So I so just you build her confidence over time and the strength, inner strength in her. Yes. Because, I mean, that's what I've seen in like a lot of females, right? Because some of the experience they had, they're not brought up that, like, nurture that aspect of, okay, you're not only passive, you're a fighter. So you nurture her, not even though she did not martial arts, to be a fighter. In a certain yes. extent. Yes, yes. You yes. know, fight for your beliefs, yeah. fight for for your opinion, mm-hmm. you state yourself, you know, embrace yourself. So you taught her confidence and fight in her, a fighting spirit. So not a lot of people that misunderstand, right? Being a fighter and have the fighting spirit is a whole different thing. Hmm. You Explain know what I'm saying? That. That's a good, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Explain mm-hmm. that. So <clears throat> it's my opinion, right? You can have a person that never done martial art. All right, or anything, but they have fighting spirit in them because they're taught them that or nurtured that in them. And like you, you know, some females are f- alpha females, I'll mm-hmm. say, because they're nurturing them to not just accept anything, even if you go against their beliefs and morals, right? Some of them will do it because they're never nurturing in them, you know? So that's come from like how you raise her. Mm-hmm. Was easy? No. Is it probably some things, and you, then the same thing with Ella. Uh, my daughter is like certain things that I say I'm hard on her and my wife is like oh you've been too hard it's like no she needs to learn and know this from our home from our household Mm -hmm. because I don't want her to go there and get hurt herself right Mm -hmm. so you prepare them the same thing my dad right so when I came home to my dad I mean I was not even doing jujitsu or anything like that or martial arts at the time I was five years old and my dad says something to me he's like listen don't come back home crying. I'm going to give you a whooping. <laughs> and I was like, and that was like. Crying crying from what? From anything. Somebody hurts my feelings. Somebody uh, mm. punch me. If somebody says something to you, you say something back. That you know, If they say something you do not like, say something back. Mm-hmm. If somebody punch you, punch them back. Don't come cry. <laughs> don't come cry home. I'll give a whooping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I learned from an early age that those don't accept. Me. I told my daughter the same thing. I was like, somebody, so a kid there came, uh, whole school. And by the way, I love your daughter's name. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty. Thank you. So she came home and one day she's like, I punch a kid. And I was like, why? It's like, he, he punched me in the stomach. I punched him right back. So I was like, good for you. Good for you. Yeah. There's not enough Sam's out there anymore. Mm. Yeah. You know? And I told her, like, one day she's like, when you start, like, doing martial arts. And it was like, and I told her, like, how it's important for her to stand for herself yeah. and not let people push her over. And one day, you know, kids are mean in general, right? And, and I say, somebody mean to you, make sure you stand your ground. You're not going to be mean to them. But you're not gonna let them hurt you's feelings. You're not gonna let them hurt you physically. You you don't allow them that. And every time you defend yourself, you get ice cream. <laughs> not a whooping, but ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> because she has to know that it's not okay for somebody to go and punch her or kick her because it happens all the time. And she doesn't even have to tell me anymore because her level of confidence at this point in time, and I can tell the way she walks. To my car. You can tell the confidence of a kid walking towards you. Mm-hmm. How they, I mean, a lot of people don't pay attention to this, but I pay a lot of attention. When somebody, walk, a kid walking to my door, I know what the kid's been through. Mm. I know. Uh, does that resonate with you, Charlie? Yeah, that's why I was saying mm-hmm. Sam's flow is, is, is nice because it has to, it, it's, he's tuned in to his, inner self. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. More than just the 
I don't want to say the older generation, but you know, they yeah. come in puffy, you mm. know, and, and you know, I'm eight Tonka toys for breakfast and, you know, walk backwards to school <laughs> and, you know, had one limb that, that Sam's real, his spirits there. It's, it's, um, it's it's refreshing to hear this. I know you guys are the same. Of of you hit them, you hit back. I mean, we're in a culture where that's yeah. not accepted anymore, and that's why it's yeah. becoming weaker and weaker and weaker and mm. weaker, and yeah. weaker and weaker. Yeah, they're suppressing. Yeah. The so mayhood. he's a breath of fresh air because it's a um, he's a dying breed, even as a parent of uh, mm -hmm. you know. I'm, I'm sure people would look at him and go, he's too hard on his, 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 his daughter of whatever that yeah. is, but yeah. it's not, he's teaching like those, those are, That's you, a, it's almost a life skill. What he's when doing. when you yeah. have girls, it's different than having boys. Mm -hmm. When you have girls that, you know, I would drive around with Ashlyn and Grayson and go see that car, see how shady that car is. You got to look out for that car. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I teach them different when you're at a gas pump before you pull up, look at the, look at the cars in the parking lot. Yeah. Figure it all out. Watch it. If you do, if it doesn't feel right, pull away and go somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I those, it's all lost. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing like that anymore in life of, of, life skills mm -hmm. it, it's it's all about the benjamins and you know how how awesome i look and you know how educated i am instead of like you know how do you live through life yeah oh and yeah that, you know that we talked that's a part of mental toughness you know and and when the chips are down and you're getting your butt kicked you know what do you do you know because life's going to hit you and people that don't he's 100 percent right People walk in and the kid has their arms crossed, sign of insecurity, no confidence. Mm. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, the parents stay a little bit longer. Okay. They've doted over their kids some more. So, mm. hey, you're going to have to get out for this kid to grow. Yeah. You know, there's no parents allowed and, you know, because it's going to be, it's not going to go well. So you can read that. Yeah. Uh, my, um, Sam, you were 16, 15, 16 years old when you started. Yes. Yeah. So I guess the then the question is, okay, you got this dad that's coaching you through this and teaching you to be uh, assertive and, I mean, you know, st fully stand your ground. So you came in to jujitsu with that uh, parental kick, the push, right? So I guess because, you know, you come into jujitsu, you're a small guy. Yeah. Really small. I mean, for your age, yes. you know, and then you're going up against people who are more skilled than you, a lot bigger than you. You got a insurmountable obstacle there. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just like, you know, um, so you came into it. it I wouldn't say jujitsu made you tough. You already came in with that toughness because of, would you say because of the influences of your dad? It's a household. That's yes. what he, that's, yeah. that's my notes right here yeah. uh, of it's he, what I'm getting from him. It starts from his household. It starts from there. Whatever that household looks like is basically what you're going to be. And of course that's biblical again. It starts in all in, in Ephesians mm -hmm. of it all goes with your parents is he's saying his father was this way. Yeah. And then he's giving his daughter these life rules and he is, is Sam. Yeah. Sam yeah. is. Sam. Yeah. He's not anything else, right? right? He's he's Sam. So yeah. He's taking that and applying it to his daughter. So when she says, when he says or looks at her on the mat, I'm just trying to put this all together. Yeah. And she eyeballs him, which Ashlyn and Grayson have both done to me in their yeah. sports, and he's like, Don't quit. She doesn't go. I don't know what that means. I know exactly what that means because daddy has taught me that yeah. under my household. Yeah. And it, it came from Sam, yeah. not from teachers teaching what they want and, and other people. Like, yeah, I could see Sam being, I got it. You know, I don't need all these people to raise my girl. I, I got this. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the most important things that my dad told me, like when I was growing up, because we, we're Christians. I'm Christian. And he says, he said to me, he's like, I'm hard on you. I correct you every time you make a mistake. Otherwise, life you do that. And you don't want life to correct you. Mm -hmm. And of course, like, I got to a point, like, I was not only that, my, my, my professor, uh, Jerk Lino taught me a lot too. Um, and it was a, I will say that it was really hard on Jacqueline and Eric as well. And when I got to jiu-jitsu. Those are your two coaches, Eric yeah, and Jacqueline. Yeah. So Eric was first 
which is like my first instructor <clears throat> because I lived like two miles from him, mm -hmm. his gym, right? And he was a, he also several times world champion as well. And oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. <clears throat> he's, he's same lineage. He's Drake Luna's student. Oh, okay. So Eric is Drake Luna's student. Oh. So, which that's like why I went to Drake Luna. So we all the same lineage. I got you. So we all the same lineage. Yeah. Um, Jacqueline, by the way, is one of the best coaches of Jiu Jitsu, maybe of all time. Yeah, yeah. I needed that. I yeah, know. yeah. He's, okay. I mean, he has so many world champions. Yeah, he can him. Meet. And so Jacqueline is something really interesting. He taught me a lot and he helped me a lot. And, and he always said the same thing, right? And of course, he would be even more harsh. And Eric, the same thing, the same way he's like, don't be. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to say it this way. Like, don't be a fucking pussy. No, you said it on the first show. It's good. Yeah. I don't. I mean, be yeah. authentic. I like it. He's like, but he's getting out of out of everybody so far. I think you're understanding what his definition is. Yeah, and and if you don't, nobody's been paying attention, right? Yeah. So when I start there, and it was hard because I mean, at the time, the jujitsu was different. You know, jiu-jitsu now is like we want more people on the mats. You want people to understand the philosophy, help people out, and, and help people out. You know, and just improve their life, enhance their life in several ways. Jiu-jitsu back in the day was a fight. <laughs> it was a fight. I mean, what do you want to do jiu-jitsu for? To fight. If I need to fight, I need to defend myself. That's why I got it in jiu-jitsu. I have to find something that my stature, my small stature is not going to... I don't need to be big or stronger to be able to defend myself to anybody. So I was like, I mean, I need to do jiu-jitsu so I can protect myself, defend myself. And, and then I saw competitions and I was like, I want to be a world champion. On the day, before the day one, I saw the competitions, like I want to be a world champion. But anyway, so when I got there, they literally kicked my ass for like an hour. <laughs> I'm not joking. And the guy looked at me and he's like, so, are you a pit bull or a pussy? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> so my, I got back home and I was like beat up. You know, my, I could barely move my arms. I have to basically take a cold shower, put ice on my arms. And my mom looked at me and said, what are you doing? It's like, man, I'm beat up. She's like, you're not going back there. I was like, mom, I am going back because I'm an all fucking pussy. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming back. So, one of the main reasons that I, I was like, and then my mom was like, are you sure you're going to do it? My dad always say, I mean, you, you just keep going, right? My dad was the opposite. Mom is like, I'll try to protect you, you know? Mm -hmm. And, but my dad taught me for so long, right? And that's like, you don't just quit a fight, right? And that for me, and I, one thing that you just taught me, right? The main things, of, of course, you embrace hard times. You know what I'm saying? Hard times, I embrace them. People can give me a hard time, can do anything. You know what makes me do? Get me fired up. So that, that would, right? you would say that an added thing that the sport helped you with is just understanding that this hardship is something that good that you wanted. Yes. Yeah. I mean, anybody that thinks like hard time, if people have a hard time, majority of the time, they have to the of quitting. Mm -hmm. Right. But the most, the most important thing, like the hardest thing is going to bring the most value to you, in my opinion. Because you're going to have, you're going to have so much more value to you. Because anything that comes easy, goes easy. Because there's no value to it, right? Well, yeah, you're right. Because that's why I dig this cat. Because he has so much character from hard times. If you ever, if you ever meet anybody, I've said this to a client at lunch and I think I pissed him off. But, it, you know, he bragged about like, oh, not everybody has to have a hard childhood and a hard this and a hard this to, to, to be something. And I was like, so you think you had an easy childhood, easy life? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, and that's why you're not interesting at lunch. <laughs> I never went to lunch with him again because he wasn't interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you show me a hard guy. I'll show you a guy with a lot of character that you want to grab a meal with and it Time flies by. It's two hours. You show me somebody that has had everything given to him their whole life and it's easy and there's no depth and there's, there's no character, character. to him. Mm -hmm. With Sam and 
help me with this because this whole circle is this group in here has been here for the whole yeah. eight, nine of them. And I always like Ben's opinion on this. And then, of course, Griff's like a son to me. But Ben's opinion on this is what makes Sam come home or go to the coach and say, I want to be world champion where other kids or other things go. I'm fine. Yeah. Playing JV. I'm fine playing varsity. Yeah. What makes, I think we got to dig into the Sam's and the Harrison Smith's yeah. and the people of the world that go, I want to be what makes, yeah. what, what thought process goes through with that. Yeah. I understand it's, it's always going to be hard to be the best in something. And some people go <clears throat> settle or contentment. Again, we talked about that. That's all through the Bible. And people think settling is not what you're supposed to do. But being content is different than settling. Well, Sam's I, content yes, of who he is. I, I will say I, I think that's a great point because contentment, I, I've known – I have not known Sam for all of his career, probably, probably the tail end of his career, when tail end of his competition years, okay, where he was winning masters. Um, I, I wasn't there for the heat of your adult championships, which was like, that's like, you know, the, the big show. Um, but I could see this transition of towards the end of his competition years and he's transitioned to, you know, an, a, um, a different life. It was kind of like, I've, I, I, it's not like he didn't have to prove anything. It was just this, I've, you know, I've seen what I want to see. I've done yeah. what I want to do. I've, I've done it. You know what I mean? And you've seen that in other athletes, Charlie, where maybe someone came up maybe short or maybe someone has not versus the ones that have done all that they set out to do. Right. There's, a, there's, is, is that, is that a, is that true? Self-actualized. So, I think like, what down to me was like, I wanted to compete more, right? So, I had to be, at this point, right? So, I, I was an athlete, an athlete, and I competed in a lot, a lot of high, the highest level competition. And then it's a point that, because when being an athlete, correct if I'm wrong, but you have to be selfish, right? You have to be selfish. If you're not constantly thinking about how am I going to be better? You're not wrong. How am I going to be better? It's not like about, oh, man, listen, I will go to, to the gym and the guy say, hey, man, can you help me? He was like, no, I can't. Oh, when you're in the heat of competition. When you're the heat of competition or mm -hmm. even if I like. But even what like, makes somebody think or say, I want to be better? There's a lot of people. First of all, there's a lot of people with self-inflated that think they're already better and they don't work. And there's people that, I mean, in my business, it's, it, again, the correlation could roll with Sam. <clears throat> if it says four sets of 10 exercises, okay, yeah. you got four rounds, four circuits, four rounds of 10 exercises, and you watch a client go through two rounds and says, I'm done, I'll see you tomorrow, they just settled and they didn't want to be better so what makes somebody not he wants to be better he wants to be world champion yeah does that come i think it comes for sam under his roof under his father now with that being said remember this whole thing is about mental toughness yeah i think there's levels oh definitely is and i think it starts from child if your childhood is tough and you're mentally tough those levels are easier to get to that's good. Okay. That's good insight. Okay. Now you, let's let's go with one of your, your students, Cam Miller. Okay. Until Cam came in here, I wouldn't think he's mentally tough. Until he came into the wood gym? Until he came in the wood gym okay. and we started hitting him a little bit longer. Now he's at that level. We take him over to Sam. I've seen a different person in Cam. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, what, so what he's doing to him... It's like I got him this level. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we could go to this level. Yeah. But is he ever going to be the levels of a Sam? All right. Where from it, the childhood, because then mm -hmm. we go to. That's a good. That's good. Mm -hmm. I think there's levels. 
mm-hmm. various levels. I mean, what it, what I comes down to it. And if you start off, excuse me, Sam, real quick. If you start off behind the eight ball, behind the eight ball, mm-hmm. like like let's say Cam Miller, he's he's like a son to me too. I love Cam. If he starts off, he started doing jujitsu at twenty two. He's twenty three now, right? So he could get him, but I don't care what anybody says. I've said it over and over again, and I'll say it again from all the psych I took in college to understanding the brain. Zero to three, your mom knows zero to three, three to seven, seven to 11, 11 to 13, you're pretty much who you're going to be. Hmm. And you could change some. He could do whatever he wants with Cam Miller. But he's still going to be Cam. I'll kill Cam. And I don't know anything about jujitsu. Cause it's a total, it's totally, it's a mental, it's, I'm willing to die to beat you. That's a whole different mentality, but that's from childhood. Mm. And you can't create that. You, like Joe said, you can't, you can't manifest hard times. No, you can't. Because like what I, what I grew up to, you know, I'd be afraid of him. Oh, more than I'd be afraid. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I would rather. Yes, I would be afraid of Sam because of how how his mental state was growing up, not of his jujitsu. That's already a given that he could tie me in a pretzel. Yeah, but the way his thought process is. Yeah, and, and he'd be a great guy in here because he already said, "Whatever you want to do to me, you know, I'm gonna that's great. pass out before." You see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I think the great. levels are a big thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because you constantly test it, right? I mean, not only what I say about this is like, when you're a kid, you were tested, right? And how your dad approach you doing those tests. Are, but are you tested? Are some kids tested or are they cocooned? Mud puddle parents. Like, yeah, that's comes you down see, to it. You see a like, lot of that. Because what happened is, I'm going to be honest, the truth is like, you can see this today. Today, it just blew my mind. So this is a great example that we're go- heading towards to, okay? So today this guy came to me and say, I asked him, how many ra- wrestling kids you, you have in your class? Mm-hmm. He said, four. In high school. It just blew my mind. Are you talking, uh, uh, the coach? The coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you what, have four. What blew your mind? How are you going to have, like, I don't know how many kids you, I mean, you have hundreds of kids in a, in a school. In high only school. four, high school. Yeah. You have only four they're tough enough to, to withstand the wrestling. Yes. But, no, listen. <laughs> no, listen. We're not meant to be beasts anymore. That's what I'm saying to you, what I'm talking to. Because I remember, I mean, this is going to be like, this is one thing my dad told me like when I was a little kid. Somebody touch you anywhere that's inappropriate, punch them right in the face. Yeah. What parents are saying that now? <laughs> I, mean, I tell it's, Ella. Was your father a uh, a fighter? Was he a jiu-jitsu? Was my he- dad did my dad had a tough um childhood and beyond that he uh his uncle taught him judo a little bit. So from the time I was five, six and he was like he When did you get into jiu jitsu? Sixteen, seventeen, yeah. Did you wrestle at no, five, six, seven? Just fought in the streets, fight street fight. <laughs> so you didn't get into jiu jitsu, is that is that a kind of old, old age to kinda, get into? You know, if you want to do anything in a professional level, you kind of start a little bit late, right? Um, and by the time you're 13, 14, I think because 13, 14, you have, you mature enough to understand what you want, right? And one thing first also, I mean, there's a balance there, right? Because you want to have to understand what type of child you're dealing with, you know? What I mean by that? Some kids can be pushed. Some kids you have to, Coach them. You know all about this. It's like a lot of psych- psychologically coaching as well. It's because you're not only verbally coaching them, but you have to like understand how they they, they work mentally. Mm-hmm. Because some kids cannot be pushed too hard. Some kids you tell them, coach them, it's like you here was you have to do. Then give them a push and step back. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like it's like really uh, complex to coach. You know this because you know, otherwise you know it'd be a you're a great coach because you understand not only how the body works, how the mind works, you know, is a, is a combination of two. And nowadays it's even harder because are you, can you actually push them? 
before you start losing them mm-hmm. or losing other clients because mm-hmm. you've been too tough on them. Mm-hmm. So it's like, so it's like, well, like for, for us, you know, it's, I'm sure for the wrestling coaches as well. I mean, you cannot like, I remember the, my, my, when Joe Colina got there and he yelled at me, stop being a fucking pussy. <laughs> and I was like, Fuck, I'm not being fucking, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna be a pussy. You know? Don't be that. <laughs> you know? So that's what I, I was like, fuck no, I'm not gonna be a fucking pussy. You know? Some, Happy Friday morning. You yeah. know, like, I that, wanna beat somebody up! <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. You know, so, so the guy is trying to break me, right? He put me, it's supposed to be five minutes round, he give me 10, 15 minutes round. If I'm gonna quit. Draculino? Yeah. He look at me. He's like, I f- sorry, I forgot about time. Did I quit? No, I'm not fucking quit. He knew, but but you think he knew exactly what he was doing? Oh, he knew <laughs> because Draculino never told me like this. One thing, the funniest thing, like because now, and I totally understand him. I don't do this anymore, right? I'll be chasing my students. Where are you? Come here, come here. And I sat down with Draculino because we're now both coaches. And I I talked to him, and he's like, Draculino, you know what's funny? You never call me one time or send me a message or anything. And he's like, if you did, if you really didn't want to be a champion, you're never going to be a champion. His words are right there. Yeah, he would be a great person to interview. Directly, no. Yeah. I, I don't know him from many, Yeah, be I don't great. know him, but Because be he's yeah. straight for like even more than I am. I'm scared of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what I would tell, like I tell people all the time. And I tell, I know phenomenal people, right? You know, one of the, my students, I'm going to tell him, is Baby Joe, right? He's a phenomenal kid, super talented, and he's an athlete, right? And I told him, and I can tell, I look at him, and he's drilling, and then this other guy comes here and start drilling on him. He just accepted. it. And I was like, and I told him, why you you let them drill on you? And he's like, oh, man, I'm trying to help them. He's like, listen, man, if you want to be the best, we have not, no time for nobody else but you. Because you're wasting your time right there. That's bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it is what it is, man. You want to be a top athlete? You want to be a top dog? You don't have to do anything but else but yourself and be yourself, make yourself better. If you're not con- – like, nobody's going to reach the peak of the career, anything in life. I'm telling this up front, right? You did the same thing. You dedicated yourself for your med school, and you became successful. You're a badass because you dedicated yourself. Mm-hmm. That's why you got yeah. married later on and everything yeah. you did it was late because yeah. you're focused on your career. Yeah. I was super selfish. Super selfish. I can yeah. tell you selfish, because yeah. you no, there's <laughs> a super, type of people. I there's applies. a type of people. There's a type of people to What a uh, narcissist. <laughs> you know it is. No, I know what you're saying. There's That's a type true. of people to be yeah. successful. He's successful because he mm-hmm. dedicated himself and I can tell he cannot tell you need to tell me a story. I know his story for him just by the way he told me certain things. Mm. Oh, I got married later. I mean, I have kids later in life because you're focused on your career. You want nothing to disturb yeah. your career. Uh, I didn't have time. No, yeah, same thing. Yeah. It makes sense. Right. And that's mm. what people don't understand. Oh, yeah. You want to be a, the best? Okay. Show me how your routine is and I'll tell you how, how great you're going to be. So define the best. When you say the best, define that. Give me whatever. Sentences, words. I don't so care. for me, I tell my students all the time, right? You don't to be the best. To be the best of yourself. For me, that's what matters the most, right? Yeah. What you can be the best of your... Look, first, everybody has like... You have to understand this, right? You're going to be... Sometimes you're going to have peers, right? You have to understand sometimes you're going to have a guy that's super talented and work really hard. So this guy's point 20 hours of work... I mean, 15 hours of work on a mat, like Mike Musumeshi. Mike Musumeshi is one of the guys that's one of the most talented. He has the mind and he has the drive and he has everything in a book, the checklist, and he has talent. So it's going to be hard for you to beat that guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the guy has everything in a checklist to become the best of the best and he has talent. Now, you have everything in a checklist, but you're not as talented as the guy. Guess what? More like this guy's gonna beat you, but don't necessarily mean he's gonna beat you every time. But now comes the strategy in the game. Can outsmart them, right? Mikey Muse is really smart. So that's why it's a bit harder, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's like you're facing a guy that's really, so that's why he's, it is what it is. Unless you get him in a bad day, then he's sick. <laughs> it happened, right? 
So he's bringing a lot of tools to the table. To be the best, you got to bring a lot. I th- think of the the best ones that you've had in here. Yeah. He's got it all. I can think of one guy. We're about to interview him. Yeah. He's got it all. Yeah. You know. Well, and 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 we talked about this. And sorry, I always touch you. I'm Italian. I'm Italian. No, it's okay. <laughs> I'm a Brazilian, so I, I don't want you same. to feel offended by that. No, no, <laughs> Brazilians always do. I bring a kid. Okay, okay, oh, okay. It's okay. okay. So, <laughs> so, so you think about this, and uh, you know, Griff. This last journey, this last year, we've been on with Griffin doing the documentary of the Wood Gym and Patron is amazing. And we always have these. I missed you the last couple of weeks and not having them. I'm kind of selfish of having Griff to talk. He's been traveling, interviewing some yeah. former clients everywhere. It's beautiful. But we all bring it back to the best of the best. They keep it really simple with everything, their lifestyle, their diets, their trainings. And the best ones I see don't, they don't move around a lot. They're not looking for something. They stick to the basics. And the ones that, in in my business, the ones that move around and I'm going to go here and do this. I'm going to go here and train there. I'm going to go here and train. I'm going to, because I've got to keep searching for different things instead of staying with. Yeah, because it's going to give it time to to actually get to the results because you're moving so much. So the guys finally understand how you work and everything, get to know you, and now you can start to have progress. You already changed to a whole different person. You can start. So you reset yourself every single time. You're not going to go in right. nowhere. Like right. if Sam's my, co- I don't see you going anywhere else. No, I mean Sam's your it's coach. Easy. It's like okay, keep that's it simple. It's keep it <laughs> yeah, simple. I mean, yeah. yeah. So let's go back. Let's go back to the wrestling coach with the four kids because I'm finding that in other sports just recently where kids aren't going out for teams and the teams have to fold. Oh really? Yeah. You seeing that now? I'm seeing that now wow. in in. The private schools and, 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 you know, the most expensive private schools in Knoxville are folding teams. Really? Because there's no, there's no interest. And Sam, I think or the work ethic is gone with a lot of like, nobody likes to practice anymore. And I hear a lot of that even in here. It's the pra- the game days, but we loved practice. I mean, practice was, was fun. So what's happening to that culture? And, and can it be changed or is it getting? Softer. Oh man, I mean, you can tell by ever the way you can look around and see how how everything's turned out to be, right? I mean, you look at that. I mean, you look at the ads of Army or Army. Look at and look at the ads of different countries. I mean, bef- I mean, I remember like when I was like at, um, I was like a young adult, right? And I have this. I still have because I love America. I, I mean. America gave everything I always wished for, right? So this is the best country by far, you know? But that's why I've, I'm not doing this anymore because I'm super passionate about something and I get myself really into it. So I'm trying to take a hold back. People cannot handle it anymore. You know, people cannot handle the truth. You cannot tell them, hey, man, guess what? With this work ethic, you're not going to go nowhere. You're right. So what's happening to that? Because that's the beautiful thing. I had two conversations before I got here is... When you speak the truth and, and bring it on to me also, why can't, why can't we be critical and criticized? What's you can't in- anymore. You can't criticize anybody. And, and criticizing the Bible is different than what we think it is. We think it's putting everybody down and doing this and doing this. Instead, it's like, hey, Sam, you, be honest. you're putting on some weight. You're not going to be able to move around the, the mat. Let's, yeah. let's tighten it up again. Exactly. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for loving me that much for telling you. Nobody they don't look wants at that. it that Nobody wants that. A guy here, I'm even going to give you an example. The guy t- I told him, where have you been? And he's like, oh, man, I've been doing this, doing this, this. So you're doing your own thing, right? You're doing your own thing because you think you know a lot and you think you oh, – I never heard that before. Hello, garage workouts. We get it. We get it. <laughs> you oh, got man. it all together. Yeah, Guess yeah. what? You're not going to go nowhere because, first of all, you're going to be cheating in your training because it doesn't know to be – a guy there to push to you. To watch you, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the same thing, I was going to Draculino, and I tell people all the time, until this day, I mean, I train, do my thing now, because, I mean, I'm far. I mean, Draculino's a text, I'm here. But until that day, I was doing the Masters Worlds, right? The first thing I look at, where's Draculino at? He's still my coach, because I know that, give me confidence, right? Give you like that. Sense of Kate, okay, I had this guy be my back here, you know, he has my back. Well, you value the coach. They yes. said that about um, um, Manny Pacquiao's guy, Fred, Freddie uh, Roach. Roach yeah. When he was playing basketball, he would look up to make sure Freddie Roach was in the stands watching him. Oh, 
as, yeah. as a trainer coach? Yeah. Like what, what makes you that person that is like, I need that coach instead of going, I got it all figured out. I'll go do it in my garage my or way. whatever. Yeah. yeah. The things like this, you have to have two things, right? You have the confidence in yourself. You have to be humble enough to understand that you don't know everything. Mm. Perfect. There's two things. <laughs> that's a, I mean, it's that's, that's right it's wonderful. there. Yeah. Because a lot yeah. of the times what happened is the guy, I mean, it happened to me. You know, these guys came to me and started inflating my ego when I was like, world, I became world champion. My first year on the black belt, I became world champion. Man, man, you're the best and this and this. You accomplish even more than your coach. I was like, listen, man, calm down. I'm here because of my coach. It's that loyalty, man. Yeah. I'm here because of him. If it was not for him to go and push me every day in, my, in the room and teach me, even though I develop a different style, but he laid the ground for me. So so you will you know? say, and, and, and Griffin, Ben, think about this. You will say that you'll hold to, I will not know everything like my coach does, and that's why I stay with my coach. I do not know more than my coach, no matter how many world champion titles I have. Will you always think like that? Oh, yeah, for sure. But how does one think like that? Because I see it. Griff's been around me the last year, very intense. I see it week in, week out where, oh, I got it figured out. I could go out on my own and do it. Yeah. No, I mean. No. We, we, we talked about this. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 32 I mean, years I've had more clowns like that. Yeah. But the things like what happened is, what I'm told is, people understand so there's a human failability, okay? Human, we're, God already says like, to not live in the flesh. Because if you live in the flesh, you're gonna have, you have a lot of sins, you have a lot of stuff. If you let the spirit lead you, it makes you humble, right? Everything that man, the flesh is uh, supposed to be, the spirit is the opposite, right? So live by the spirit, hmm. not by the flesh. So in a, what the spirit tells you to be, to be humble, you to God, right? Mm -hmm. Is everything that is supposed to, now the flesh tells, I know everything. I'm, I'm, ever, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's the totally opposite. So what it comes down here, a lot of the times the guy, okay, won a small tournament or won this, or even like succeed on his first draft. He's like, I'm I good now. I, I got, got it. it. Yeah. I just need to do this now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But your coach is the one that's going to say, Hey man, you need to walk this, this, there's a, Man, this, here's, a, here's a problem with your performance. Yeah, even though you won, you, can you work won. On you these. Can, these will have to be yeah. proved, right? Uh, interesting. So, yeah. so that's a problem. It's a human thing. So you're gonna see people here come in. He does does well in one draft or one do one games. Okay, man, I, ju I just need to do this. I got it now. I'm not gonna do this. So that's why you look at the guys that stick them like stick them with the coach, right? And focus on then listen to them. That's what I did with Jerk the whole time. I mean, I have an offer to go to other teams. Right? I have offered to, but I never done because why? First, I'm thankful. And I know that I don't know everything. That's the thing everybody thinks. Oh, man, I know everything. I, I can do this on my own. You don't. Because if you don't have like, even like, if you look at the most successful people, they always have what? No, the most successful people you read at the end of those books, they have a mentor. The always first thing they do is have a mentor. Hmm. Right? Mentorship. Hmm. Somebody they can talk to. Somebody they can say, hey man, because sometimes you need that. Even though you know everything and think everything, and then the guy, you need to be a hell reality check, say, hey man, mm -hmm. you need to do this. You're not doing this right. And you're like, what? And then now you have to be humble to understand that. Okay, I have to listen, right? Because yeah. sometimes, like, oh, you're doing this wrong. Oh, this guy just want to criticize me. Everything I do. Yeah. Because people are getting like to a point now. You cannot even not. You're not criticizing. You're being honest with them. Because you. One thing about the coach is you should think be thankful for the coach that's gonna say tell you the truth and be honest with you because he's looking for your best interest. And a lot of people now they think they okay, don't think that. No, they think man, this guy just want to put me down. Mm -hmm. Or this guy, like, like I mean, I'm gonna. I mean, yesterday. I had a conversation with this guy, and he's like... I like when he goes, that's my new tag, this guy. <laughs> Do you was, believe this guy? <laughs> no, I was serious. I like it. I had that a conversation a with this guy. Trademark. He literally goes and, like, he started doing his own thing. And I was like, so now, I mean, you do your own thing? So guess what? Oh, I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's like, <laughs> yeah. are you going to do your own thing? You want to do your own schedule? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so you're not going to be a champion. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're not going to be a champion. I will be there to just like give you support and hang out with my family because I'm going to do it for the trip. Right. Yeah. It's plain simple. Yeah. Yeah. He's speaking it. Yeah. I mean, He's honestly, flowing. I mean, yeah. when I told you this, I was like so blunt and I have to be stop being blunt, you know, because I was losing mm-hmm. students. People cannot take it. People cannot take it. I had this guy. He won one big tournament. A month later, he knew everything. It, that's what I was talking about is age, Griff. And that's what my mentors from Radomir to Louis Simmons that were huge influences in my growth is he will go back to being blunt. Yeah. He will go. You will be me. When Louis Simmons was 51, when I, I lived with him in the 1990s and I was in the mid twenties. And he's like, you will have no patience after you go through your full cycle of all the BS and everything and adapting and adapting and adapting. And you'll get to the point to where it's, it's, it's a real beautiful thing when you reach that, that pinnacle and it's more than money can buy. And it's more than zeros in the bank account of having real integrity for what you do. And you're able to fire people. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, because they, 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 they don't agree with you. I mean, that's things like this. They right? don't fit. You know what I'm saying? You'll get like, and, and I know it's going to be hard because he, he's a Todd Helton mind. He's a Harrison Smith mind. He, he's, he's, he's a world champion. So you're not going to have 20 world champions walking in on a Wednesday at his place. So like he said, I've got to lower down. I, I guarantee you lay it on Wang, on Chewy right here, you give it to him because he has the champion mind of what he could do. Oh, yeah. You could give him anything. He's like, no, I give it James. <laughs> I don't, he's one of the toughest guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, no, he is mentally tough because I go with him, right? And he goes with me every day. Mm-hmm. He roll with me every day. I mean, I'm not trying, I mean, because I mean, he's a nice guy. He's my friend. I'm not going to go trying to hurt the guy, but we train hard, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> we train hard. And he does not quit. And I, what I love about him, they look at me and it's like, you son of a bitch, I'm going to catch you this time. <laughs> he cuts me out and I love it. A lot of the times people think like, I don't take this, I don't think like personal. I love it because I know this fight, he has a f- f- fighter spirit in him. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want. So a lot of the times, like I wish he came to me when he was 20. Of course, you, you know, <laughs> he could be a, he could be a world champion. <laughs> you know, he could. Listen, you, you went through a career being, well, you already told many things in your life, right? You went to medical school, everything. A lot of people cannot handle the, the pressure. You went through a whole medical school. Two people, a lot of people think it's easy, but the way he did it is different because he went, not only that, but he also went with integrity, right? And especially his field, right? And he fought for his field. He fought for his place. He fought for a lot of things. That he's right, and he's still fighting for it. So that's a fighter spirit. Even if he didn't do jujitsu, he has a fighting spirit in him, and that I cannot teach him because he already came with that. And and don't you think we're losing more and more year after year the fighting spirit? Oh yeah, man. I mean, you cannot even like tell somebody that like, hey, man, you have to do this more. If you tell them like, you mean you have to train more? I tell people all the time, you have to train more. They get mad. It's like, man, you rude. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Yeah. So right now, I mean, so right now people say, "Hey Samuel, you're not as committed as you used to be." Mm-hmm. You know why? Because there's no commitment. It, Griff and, and and Wang, you've been here since the '90s. He was me. Where you, you get in those thirties, even forties, and you get to, you're beat down from the people that you're with because they don't have that. Hey, so was I right about you guys had the same? Yeah. 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 You damn it, Wang. You, you were right. You bastard. <laughs> yes. You, you were gave right. me such a hard time. How many? But yeah. well, we had to go through that hard time to get here, <laughs> right? <laughs> he gave yes. me such a hard time. Yes. Right, but, but you see it now. You see you, I mean, you, yes. have to, you don't spend the time I do. You can to, see you know, it in his eyes. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the passion, conviction. the soul, the conviction. Yeah. You see it in the eyes. And, and it's not. Let me. Okay. So you, let's go back around. Okay. And okay. you tell me, you know, what do I see? How do my perceptions of Sam when it comes mm-hmm. to. 
mental toughness in my definition of Sam. Yeah. What I see, what he's saying, he backs up. Mm -hmm. The words that he says is backed up by the actions that he does. So when he says, hey, I, when he's drill, he's fought, especially when he needs to be around people like this here. So he keeps that because he will lose some of that from the product of the kids and everybody's coming. He needs more Chewies and Gam Millers. Get this cat in there, you know, yeah. so he could put that right in fire. his eyeball back to everybody yeah. and the fire. Because, like he said, he, I, I, I can't be rude to this person. I can't be hard to this person. I can't be hard to this person. Yeah. I can't. You need, he needs to get that group where they're like, he just let it roll. Just let, yeah, just and let him rip. It'll, it'll yeah. be, it'll, it'll, it's a million dollars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a million dollars. That's what but I, I know where you've been and I know where, I know exactly where he is, Griff. Exactly. But when he says that, um, I've seen that it's almost a greediness in the way that he trains. It's greedy. Like there's like, this is my time to drill. I'm, I'm drilling. I'm drilling right now. Like, there's well, no, it's the Chewies of the world that keep him going. But, but so do, it is do you iron see what I'm saying? Uh, do, do you, but it, it, he comes in there and he's getting ready for a comp, especially around that competition time. It's like, I ain't got time for this. I'm getting every, taking advantage of every mm -hmm. single moment. And when he says, Hey, I work out seven days, six, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. He's not just, it's, he's not just saying that he's doing it. Right. And I've seen it happen over right. year after year, after year, after year, That's after yours. year, okay. after year, three days a week. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. things have changed a little bit now, not the competition, but he's still there two, three days a week. I mean, two, three days a, a, a day training and two or I mean, three sessions a day, two, three sessions. A day. Yeah. Right. So when, when there's the, in the integrity of what he is saying and backing it up with the actual work that he's saying that he is preaching, it matches. So it's like, do you see what I'm saying? I do. And, I do. and cons that type of discipline and consistency over a lot of time. And I, I, I've only seen a small percentage of that time, maybe like, you know, 15% of that time, but I know from that 15% that he was, he was sure as hell was doing that. And so his entire people career. literally believe because they get me on this my tail end. Like when I say that and I say I live that, they don't believe it. They say there's no way you did that. I was like, why am I gonna lie? I'm gonna look at my wall. Look yeah. at how many world championships because I have. Yeah. They don't think they're capable of it, and that's why they say there's no way. Yeah. And that's why iron has to sharpen iron. You better be around people that are doing it just as good or better than you in whatever field, so they can keep you going, go for yours. That's awesome because not too many people want you to be happy if they're not happy. Yeah. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Real quick. I want we don't have to wrap it up. I was just wanting Griff and Ben to give their definition of what Sam defines mental toughness. From what you've listened to today, what do you think is mental toughness? What do you think his definition? Now, I do think well, I have I have two things that okay. I've been thinking about since you said this. Number one, cuz you guys talked about with the youth and I've lost this art. I think they don't know how to interpret fear. I think they run from fear. They don't take it on. Hmm. I think that's a big thing. So I, I hear both. And I think the other thing is mental longevity. People can go do something that's hard for a day or a week or a month. But you all three have something in common to where you have mental longevity. Going to med school. Doing things in silence. For me, my perspective is it's like, how do you create mental longevity and make it a lifestyle and not towards just one specific habit of your life? Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. Habits. So you're saying I do agree with habits. Don't run from fear. Yeah, I think the big thing with him is is like one product of your environment is one huge thing, but also Well, he's the first guest we had, Griff, that goes, um his father taught him, Sam taught Ella. Mm. If you're gonna hit hit back. Yeah. That's like 1950 stuff, right? Like that's not, that's like, Oh, misunderstood. You must be going through something today to hit me. Let's talk about it. Whatever it is as a fighter, he's saying no. Okay. Yeah. We got it. Ben. I think, um, what I'm taking away from this last hour or so is, you know, if I went, to your gym and, and I was on the mat or whatever I even if I got my ass kicked or whatever I would probably enjoy it just because I like new stuff um, and being exposed to it but I would never sit there and think 
oh, I, I could go win a competition. I would just think, well, that was interesting, and I learned some. And so for someone to, with that first exposure, say, well, I could be the best. I would say, well, I could be okay at this. I may be interested in this. I might sign up. That's, that's almost an insane thought of, I'm going to be the champion. And so of the world, of the world. (laughs) And so to a, not many people would have that experience and then set such a high goal for themselves, but then b, knowing that you're going to have to train your mind and your body and mastering your body with your mind. Yeah. That's what you've, you have this synthesis (laughs) Um, yeah, there is a duality, and you know that when your body is failing, your mind can still survive, and you can retreat into that and keep fighting, even though your body's telling you, "No, I'm broken. Stop. Rest. Quit training." That's really that was a perfect like was I, that was awesome. That was awesome right there. Mind over matter. <clears throat> mind over matter. Right, and that's a lot of time. Because I tell people all the time, because now I'm in a different time, like I'm in different season in my life, right? Yeah. What I'm doing now, or what I do, what I train, because I love jujitsu. I train three times a day, right? Jujitsu. And people still think I'm crazy. And as a matter of fact, some people say that they send people, because I told my friends that, and they send their students to visit my school to see if I was there training. Oh, really? No, yeah. He's gonna, <laughs> that's funny. No, I swear. <laughs> I swear. When I told friends oh that God, I'm still doing so that, funny. they're like, you, you, you're crazy. No, I'm not crazy. I just love this sport. I came to the sport and I came to the to United States because I love jiu-jitsu. And I wanted to do all the time, right? Because now, only thing that changed now because I have a family now. And that's, of course, is going to be my priority. Okay? And priorities change. But they'll come back. So... You and Sam, okay, think about this, and Griff's been along my journey for a long time, is when your kids are older and out, you'll find that inner beast oh, yeah, again for sure. and go on the this mat like, five I'm, times a day. I'm still doing it, yeah. but I just leave it earlier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. I you mean, leave her my earlier. wife right. My wife already knows why I'm with my wife, because she knows mm-hmm. what, she, what she got into it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, she knows. Yeah. I mean, isn't my second marriage because mm-hmm. of that. Because my first marriage is just like, no, you you work so much in this jiu-jitsu. You train so much. I mean, it's all you do is jiu-jitsu. I was like, I embrace this mm-hmm. as my lifestyle. So when a time, like, that's what you pin, pinpoint there. And it's like, many times I was like beat up physically. And I was like, I still have to do this. Because when I look at the world championship, I told my friends, my friends laugh at me. It's like, I'll be in a big stage one day. I want to be in a big stage. I want to be on TV. I want to be like recognized. I want to be a world champion in the black belt level. And they're like, dude, you cannot even hang with us. You're going to get, you have no chance. I was like, okay. I didn't say anything. I just kept it's doing probably, the work. That was probably fire in your If fire work, because if, I mean, it fired me up. Yeah. You know, I got it. I, I it's, it's, two, it's there. It's, two, it's there. Two, two words with Sam in tune. Yeah. Yeah. In tune, you know? Yes. But again, the only reason I always refer to Griff, because we're doing this documentary and we're going to be a year and a half, two years into it. And he's discovering so much of this place. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as Sam. And I'll wrap it up on a Friday. Um, I got a good athlete coming in at 930. That is is awesome. And and then um, a phone call with another guy at noon to come in from Washington State. So... I am somebody, Griff. You know what? Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. These, the locals just don't get it, Griff. Uh, but the thing's like, you're talking about that, right? That's what you say something really important. That, like, sometimes people will not appreciate what they have locally. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you can be, you are the best here, can be the best in your field, and people are still like, okay, I guess. I mean, I got to go to New York for something better. You know, yeah. but it, it, you know, it's, it's crazy, Sam, because it, it, it keeps me, it, it thank you community because it keeps me humble of all right let's keep going instead of going oh you know because you, it, your text messages through the day will just and then one will beat you up and one one will bring you up you know it's, it's yeah it's funny you know it's like in honestly truth is like why you have people from all different states you know why 
because not people are willing to do their job. They may see you like, man, this is the guy. That's true. That's and true. they'd be like, you know what? I don't know if I, if I have what it takes. Yeah. Some people doubt themselves all the time. That's coming to confidence level too. That's true. So they have to fly into the place. You're right, Sam. And, and Radomir and, and Louis said that, and I did that, is they gravitate to a place that is like them. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's kind of cool. You gravitated to Sam because he's like you. Mm. That's how it works. Okay. I'm wrapping this up with, he said a great thing of, he sacrificed everything to be a world champion, yes. including a marriage. Oh yeah. So it, yeah. Ha- I think his mental toughness to me, I think sacrifice is a huge, huge word of a mentally tough person in any category of life. It doesn't always have to be fighting, weight training, speed training. It could be the the real sacrifice that people don't that's see. That's the first time we've used that word. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. sacrifice. The, like that's what a lot of people don't understand, right? I mean. If you want everything in life, there's a price to it. Yeah. And we said that on the first one. I remember you saying that on the first one. Sacrifice is like, what's up? I mean, I came to the United States because I love jujitsu and I sacrificed my family, my friends, and everybody. Mm. You know? I mean, don't we have to to get, I mean, and that's where we talk about settling is he wasn't, he was willing to, you know, burn the boats to take the island. Yeah. I loved it. It was Great. awesome today. It was, it, Sam, thank you so much for it coming so in. so quick, man. <laughs> it was so, it I, mean, so it I mean, it does. I mean, you could rock yeah. and roll. I mean, you could do this all. You could, I mean, that's where we have these round table discussions like yeah. this. We sit in here for two or three hours and then go, oh my God. I, I enjoyed listening to all of it. It was, it was wonderful. Thank I, you. I got more out of Sam and, and I think so far I got a lot. Um, um, it's, it's really starting to come. It's really starting to define what, mental toughness is and what it looks like. And I don't think it's going to, I really don't. I, again, I, from two weeks ago of all different categories to, I really don't think it's going to be too many categories because I think Sam sets it. You're looking at Sam as the American dream. He wanted something, yeah. came over here, sacrificed everything to do it. And then sacrificed a marriage to be the best on the planet for what he's doing to find somebody that understands you can't cage him up. You how, how hard it was for him to be an American and then thusly appreciates America. And now, now running two successful businesses. Yeah. And, and, and he's, he's, he's growing and glowing, brother. Yeah. Thanks, America's Sam. the best place to be, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Chewy, thanks. Ben, Thank Griff, appreciate it. See ya. See ya. See ya.